they are all finished out of doors. Taking a little look at them in the backyard with the fall leaves. Turned out really nice. I'm really pleased with the result. And it'll be interesting to see what you come up with for yours as well. So here we are now again back indoors. We're painting. These pieces have been uh, through the whole painting process. Uh, they have the all the colors applied, including the final navy blue. Now here with the all right, let's look at the smaller speaker tube for the high frequency driver. The hardware used there is a M5 12 millimeter, which is a half inch long screw Phillips head. The reason for using the Phillips head is when you're tightening it down. If you have a hex head, that hex head could reach down in there and scratch up the surface of the paint. These were not supplied with the Matasound kit. I grabbed them at the hardware store no particular reason. Held in place with silicon glue on the inside of the tube just until they're screwed down and then they're held in place by the pressure of screwing against the speaker itself. So no real strength is needed with that silicon glue. It's just a temporary hold. Getting ready to start soldering now. I decided to solder onto the speakers for a good, uh, solid, reliable connection, vibration, immune. And here we're getting them clamped down good onto the speaker. A couple different views of that uh, high frequency driver. And also clamping the wire down onto the terminals in the base of the unit. Uh, I'm going to solder them down there, like I said, so that they can't be pulled off accidentally in any way. I don't want to have to take the thing apart to replace the connection down there. Another view of the high frequency driver with the little blocks glued on to the side of the speaker with hot glue to hold them in place until they're ready for a final assembly. The screws extending through the wall of the tube will clamp down on those. Here we are again. Uh, just about getting ready to apply that soldering iron. I like the idea of not having to solder any more than absolutely necessary. Just a lazy in me likes to avoid plugging in that soldering iron as much as I can. But uh, for a good reliable connection, nothing beats a good solid soldered connection with a nicely flowed joint. So I'll be uh, talking to you a little bit about soldering techniques as we go along here also. Here we have property flowed and soldered uh, connections on the high frequency driver. As I told you before, I was taught by one of the best solderers in the world how to uh, get a good flow and make sure they look nice and sharp. Here's a closer up look. Uh, many of you will be familiar with soldering techniques. Uh, those of you who are maybe not so familiar, want a, you know, we want a nice flow appearance of the solder, both onto the wire and onto the terminal. It's best to heat up the, the wire and not the terminal on a more sensitive object like that high-frequency driver. And here we have uh, soldered the joints down inside the base of the unit. Nicely flowed, nice and solid. Everything's tightened down nice and snug. And here's the high frequency driver in place in the tube with the screws tightened down uh, to hold it in place. And those uh, nice little spacer blocks supplied by Matasound giving proper spacing to hold it in the right position. It's got to be just the right depth. Nice and even, nice and straight around there. And uh, you can see we got that uh, nice and snug down with just a little bit of light showing underneath each of those screws and everything properly positioned. I'm being real careful about paint here also. Uh, real careful not to scratch things up. I got a little bit careless later on and ended up having to do a few little paint repair spots. And we'll talk about that later on also. The best way to go about that, depending on how you finish things, of course. These are M4 screws, one half inch long. Phillips head so that a socket going over a hex head won't reach down and scratch the paint while you're trying to tighten it down. Now we're getting ready to start gluing things together. And here is a bead of glue applied around the indentation side of the, uh, the underside of that mounting plate. And, and the indentation side is not where the speaker is going to fit. That's where the clay coupler is going to fit. 
And here's the clay coupler now being inserted down into that indentation against that bead of glue. I had enough there to squish out. I should have gotten some clear glue for this in hindsight. I used the white glue everywhere because I had it and I didn't want to go back to the hardware store when I got into the gluing, but I should have gotten some clear. It would have been a lot easier to clean up and look nicer with less cleanup. I was happy with the final result, but it would have been a lot easier. It looked a lot nicer with a lot less cleanup. A little bead of glue around the underside of the low frequency driver here in my hand. And here is the low frequency driver actually glued into place then on the upper side of that mounting plate. You can see I had a bit of that adhesive kind of squish out. Would have been a lot easier to clean up, or a lot easier to hide anyway if it had been clear again. Uh, and of course the little holes end up being filled with the little uh, speaker mounting hole plugs which were supplied by in the Matasound kit, which dress it up nicely. I did use them in the low frequency driver holes just to um, keep them looking nice and cover up that white adhesive. I did not use them in the high frequency uh, driver holes just because I liked them looking empty. Plus, I ended up accidentally drilling an unneeded hole in the side of one of the little tubes which holds the high frequency driver. That's my dirty little secret of my one flaw in my execution of the plan. And I used one of those little plugs to fill that hole. It's practically invisible. But then I didn't have enough for the other high-frequency driver holes. But that's okay. It turned out looking great just the way it was. So uh, a few more views of the, that low-frequency driver. Getting all ready to mount. And moving on to the next pieces of the assembly process. Here we have the low-frequency driver in place. Hopefully you can learn from some of my mistakes by way of this video. It's one of the nice things about being able to have a video of someone else's build experience is learn from their silly mistakes. Use the clear silicon and it'll be a lot easier to clean up. Okay, here is the other of the low frequency drivers. Getting ready to glue it into place. Got the bead applied. Kind of stuck a little bit more to the inside of the surface of that uh, underside of the mounting part of the low frequency driver. No actual screws are used holding any of the drivers in place other than the high frequency driver being kind of clamped down uh, from the sides, but the actual mounting holes are not used for any hardware for either the low frequency or high frequency drivers. Now this one went in place very cleanly as you can see Simply by being more careful, I had no cleanup there. The base, as you can see, fully painted with hardware applied. Talk about that hardware specifically later on. The M6 hardware for my custom leveling system. A machine screw, large washer, T-nut, and regular nut for each. Here are the low frequency driver assemblies completely put together. All glued together and ready for assembly. They're attached to the clay couplers, as you can see. And uh, the wires have been attached to the drivers. You want to do that before you glue them together so they're easy to get to the terminals. Here is a view of what it looks like with one of those uh, spikes from Dayton Audio held on with a half inch, or I'm sorry, a uh, M6 coupler, which is about an inch long. Adds a little bit of height to the whole thing, but uh, I don't see that being a problem. Here is the base end cap, which I left completely unfinished, screwed down with four screws on each side, supplied in the Mata Sound kit. Self starting screws, real easy to get into that wood. Screw in there with an electric screwdriver. And once that four inch tube is pressed down into that end cap that's screwed onto that base, it's not coming back out again, believe me. I glued it anyway, but I don't think it's going anywhere soon. So you better be sure it's all right before you put that together. The speaker wire coming up out of the side of the 4-inch the tube for the high-frequency driver, the low-frequency driver 
wire stays inside the tube, of course, doesn't have to come out the side like that. I had some dark silicon glue that I applied to that later on and some light that I put on the inside. Here's the bead that I did with the white silicon glue around the outside of where the 4-inch tube goes into that uh, base or the end cap, which is part of the base. Again, it is not going anywhere. Once you get that pressed down in there, it's a really tight fit. And here is the inside view of the smaller, the three inch in diameter PVC tube with the high frequency driver all mounted in. And I put uh, blue masking tape on the inside to cover up the uh, screws that came through so that there would be no snagging of the Acousta stuff on that. Now for the Acousta stuff that goes down into the four inch tube, it's going to get stuffed way down in there. I want to be able to pull that back out again, so I got one of those uh, for each side, one of those little laundry bags, a mesh laundry bag, and filled the acoustic stuff, stuffing rolled in, in there, and stuff that down inside. So I can just grab the top of that laundry bag, pull it out if I needed to. I pulled it out a couple times. At one point when I was uh, in my early listening, I thought I heard just a little bit of a resonance coming from that tube, so I added a, a little bit more polyfill, Stuffing from a craft store, not exactly the same as the acoustic stuff, but a little bit of an addition, kind of helped deaden that resonance, dampen it down a little bit. Here's the acoustic stuff that goes into the three inch tube for the high frequency driver. Also a critical part of the design. I've tried it both with and with, without. I prefer with, I believe, to without. There's a, a view with the hardware screwed into the bottom of that three inch tube for the high frequency driver. As I've mentioned elsewhere, that hardware should all be pointing straight down to the floor, not pointing out radially from the center of the tube, but straight down toward the floor. A little tricky getting that hardware all pointed in the right direction. Uh, and I talked about that elsewhere also, how to go about doing that. I really like the way the, the color turned out there. Uh, there are those screws, two more mounting, Holes for holding that onto the top of the low frequency driver mounting plate. Here's what the uh, four inch tube looks like with the acoustic stuff down in there. The drawstring for that uh, mesh laundry bag that's holding that all in place just kind of sitting there on top. So it's easy to pull out again. A view of the Acoustic stuff in this little mesh bag being stuffed down in, into place. Not not too hard a job. Takes a little bit of pushing to get it down in there, a little bit of force, but uh gotta be a little bit careful about the terminals down in the bottom. But uh they're fairly resilient, so not a big deal there. Using a battery as described in Linkwitz's instructions, you can just apply a one and a half volts to each of the drivers to see which direction it flexes and make sure that all the polarities are correct. Once I had that figured out, I just used an offset in the way that my wires were connected so that I could uh, always get them in the proper polarity. If you're wondering why I used green for all my hookup wires, it's what I had, and I was, at the time I was working with that, I was didn't feel like running back to the hardware store to get more hookup wire. So I used all green, but with, like I said, with appropriate offsets so that it's easy to get the polarities matched up properly if I do have to detach them. Here are the connectors that I used. They're a push together type connector, which is very firm, very snug, yet can be pulled together with kind of jiggling and pulling uh, with your bare hands. Don't need any tools for them. I like the way that they worked out. Makes it easy to work with the various assemblies while they're apart and uh, get them all clamped together once the final assembly is complete and have a nice firm reliable electrical connection with that connector i found it best to work with the low frequency driver assembly without the high frequency driver attached to it on top uh, to get it mounted properly on the four inch tube and uh, so i had to set it upside down like this for a few minutes while i was doing that I used tape to carefully mark where the low frequency driver assembly would mount to snug down the clamp just enough so that it was a tight fit and 
jiggled it into place and then tightened down the clamp. That was definitely the fastest way to get it done. I tried several other ways which did not give the desired result, but that worked pretty well. First leveling the base and then using a level on the low frequency driver to make sure that it was level. Attaching the high frequency driver, those three little screws are active spacers, that's why they need to point straight down toward the floor, not coming out radially. Plus the two larger screws from the Matasound kit extending into the nuts which were held in place with again with silicon glue just as a temporary measure until they were attached to and held firmly in place and held firmly in place by that uh, large screw which clamps down to the low frequency driver mounting plate and spacer assembly below notice the offset in the wires going to the high frequency driver so that if I ever disconnect them and have to reconnect them again, I can tell easily which way they go, which is plus and which is minus. I wrote down somewhere which is which as my little reminder. And here is on the inside of the 4-inch tube, I added some extra silicon sealer around where the wire extends through to make sure that there's a good seal there. Use the black sealer on the outside. I had some black silicon windshield sealer that I used on the outside. Didn't show up at all with the dark blue background. That's it for part two of our little explanation video here. Uh, I just had some good still shots that I wanted to share with you, and this seemed like a good way to go about it. On to part three in just a moment.